was the last time we're ever going to see this. The final voyage of the space shuttle program is now complete. Atlantis touched down at Kennedy Space Center just about two hours ago. Here is a look at that historic moment. Landing here down and locked. Main gear touchdown. Hurley now deploying the drag chute. Ferguson rotating the nose gear down to the deck. Nose gear touchdown. Having fired the imagination of a generation, a ship like no other, its place in history secured, the space shuttle pulls into port for the last time. Its voyage at an end. And mission complete, Houston. After uh, serving the world for over 30 years, the space shuttle turned its place in history and has come to a final stop. We copy your will stop, and we'll take this opportunity to congratulate you, Atlantis, as well as the thousands of passionate individuals across this great spacefaring nation who truly empower this incredible spacecraft, which for three decades has inspired millions around the globe. Job well done, America. Well, the moment the orbiter rolled to a stop, a new space race started heating up. NASA making it clear this morning that America will not stop exploring. It still remains unclear to some. Some people still need some convincing on this. Joining us now to talk about the future of space travel is somebody who was part of that history. Leroy Chow flew on three shuttle missions. He's the executive vice president of Excalibur Almaz, a company working on private space flights. And that's the uh, that's the part that's uh, that's curious to people. Uh, Leroy, first of all, good to see you. Boy, you how many times do you fly on that shuttle? Well, I got to fly three times on shuttle uh, out of my four missions. My last flight, I got to actually go up and down with the Russians on a Soyuz. And you mentioned, by the way, to me that the Soyuz, uh, Karen, is a little snugger than the shuttle. We're going to be re relying on the Russians uh, at least for the next two years or so until we've got a commercial uh, you know, uh, enterprise to get people to, to this, the International Space Center. That's how uh, U.S. astronauts are going to get back and forth. They're going to hitch a ride with the Russians. That's right. Uh, for the foreseeable future, the next several years at least, uh, the U.S. astronauts will be flying uh, up and back to the uh, International Space Station via the Soyuz, just like I did several years ago. Now, there are people that are very sad, frankly, that the shuttle program is ending, and it almost is a symbolic f feeling, uh, symbolically, that we're not in the game. Um, for you to say that you've flown on three of these shuttles, what was it like today to, to see that final shuttle, and also, what are, what are your perspectives moving forward on whether it's NASA's changed forever? Well, it's, it was definitely a bittersweet moment to watch the shuttle program come to an end this morning. I was with Ali uh, at the launch just about two weeks ago, and that was an emotional moment. And uh, this morning was no exception. I got up early, watched the shuttle land, uh, shed, a, shed a tear. Um, as the program came to an end, you know, it's still the most amazing flying machine ever ever conceived of, designed, built, and operated. Um, you know, there's nothing even close on the drawing boards of anyone that uh, uh, can match its capabilities. But as to the future, you know, as you know, NASA is focusing uh, primarily on commercial means to get to and from the International Space Station in the future. And uh, the little company that I work for, Excalibur Almaz, as you mentioned, is uh, pursuing part of that. Uh, we are in talks with NASA to get an, an unfunded Space Act agreement, and we hope to uh, uh, be part of that in the future. You know, Leroy, the, most of the American public watches the, the takeoffs, they watch the landings, and it's, it's been uneventful in most cases, thankfully. Uh, the fact is the real work gets done up there. The real work is the, the building and, and what's been done on the International Space Center, the space station, the experiments and things like that. Now that we're hitching rides with the, with the Russians, uh, can that same amount of work and research be done by Americans in space? Well, there's no question that we're losing a lot of capability with the shuttle going away. The shuttle can carry seven astronauts and, and right around 50,000 pounds of, uh, of payload. And so uh, nothing else comes close to that. And so the uh, Russian Progress resupply ship, for example, carries about 2,000 pounds of payload. And, uh, you know, the, the other, other cargo vehicles can carry a little bit more, but nothing really comes close. So you're right. From a logistics standpoint, I mean, NASA has made very careful plans to be able to do this. But a big open question is whether the commercial carriers, uh, the commercial 
commercial cargo carriers will show up uh, on time, and we hope they will, but uh, they're in the critical path, and if they don't, there's got to be some contingency plans. But uh, you, you bring up a very good point. Uh, we don't have that excess capability of bringing logistics up, you know, experiment samples, new experiment racks, things like that anymore now that the shuttle has, uh, has finished. And what happens to the 2,000-plus uh, employees of NASA that are going to be given pink slips because the shuttle program's ending over the next few days and weeks? Um, uh, what is the future for um, continuing to have the agency be strong and be manned and, and, and be developing new things? Well, it is a tough time, and as you know, over the past few years, I mean, layoffs have been happening in anticipation of, of the end of the shuttle program, and now the final layoffs will uh, commence, I'm sure, and it's, uh, it's difficult for everyone. I mean, it's uh, Houston's hard hit, Florida's been very hard hit, and, um, you know, it's... It is a problem. I mean, there's there's no there's no way to sugarcoat it. I mean, there are a lot of people that are going to be out of work, and it's uh, I'm I'm worried also that we're going to be losing this uh, this corporate knowledge, if you will, of uh, how to build and operate and launch and recover spacecraft. Well, we'll all miss it, uh, but we look forward eagerly to whatever the next thing is, Leroy, and uh, and we'll we'll be sure to be talking to you about that. I know, like you said, your company uh, Excalibur Almaz is one of them uh, that hopefully will be the future of, uh, of space flight. Uh, Leroy Chow, what a pleasure to have been dealing with you uh, throughout all the, uh, the last few uh, shuttle missions and on other cases, and I'm sure we'll have lots of opportunity to talk again. Thanks, Leroy. Thank you. Great to be with you. And a sad homecoming this morning for the shuttle Atlantis. Take a listen. Having fired the imagination of a generation, a ship like no other, its place in history secured, the space shuttle pulls into port for the last time. Its voyage at an end. And mission complete, Houston. After uh, serving the world for over 30 years, the space shuttle turned its place in history and has come to a final stop. NASA's shuttle program now officially retired, and John Zarella was there. The 135th and final space shuttle flight coming to an end in the pre-dawn hours here at the Kennedy Space Center. Just before sunlight, the shuttle Atlantis, commanded by Christopher Ferguson, coming in in a perfect landing here at the, uh, the shuttle landing facility. And as wheels touched down and then Ferguson brought the vehicle to wheels stop, he had some poignant words on the end of an era. Flying in space is a, is a real dream, but uh, flying in space, uh, it has a lot more to do with uh, who you do it with than, than what you do. And uh, these three folks, Rex and, and Sandy and Doug, I'll, I'll tell you, if a commander couldn't ask for three better people uh, to go and, and perform uh, an aggressive and, uh, to a certain extent, um, yeah, historic mission. It took about an hour and a half for the astronauts to get off of the orbiter, but as soon as they did, they were greeted by members of the NASA family, the uh, administrator Charlie Bolden meeting them, the launch director uh, Mike Leinbach also meeting them, uh, and then Commander Ferguson went to the microphone and talked about what an extraordinary journey it had been, this shuttle program, and how he was now looking towards the future. We're going to put Atlantis uh, in a museum now, along with the other three orbiters, for generations that will come after us to admire and appreciate. And hopefully, I, I want that picture of a, of a young six-year-old boy looking up at a space shuttle in a museum and, uh, and say, you know, Daddy, I want to do something like that when I grow up. Or I want our country to do fantastic things like this for the continued future. And if we set those steps right now and they continue with that that next generation of, of space explorers, then I, I consider our job here complete. Atlantis will be towed from the runway over to what's known as the Orbiter Processing Facility, where thousands of shuttle workers will be allowed to go out and look at the vehicle one more time up close. John Zarella, CNN at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The end of the shuttle program is not winning the support of many Americans. According to the latest CNN ORC poll, half of all Americans feel the end of the shuttle program is bad for the country. One third say no effect. And 16% believe the money can be used better elsewhere. Main gear touchdown. Hurley now deploying the drag chute. Ferguson rotating the nose gear down to the deck. Nose gear touchdown. 
Having fired the imagination of a generation, a ship like no other, its place in history secured, the space shuttle pulls into port for the last time. Its voyage at an end. Beautiful mission complete for the Space Shuttle Atlantis. The spectacular pre-dawn landing at the Kennedy Space Center marked the end of 30 years of shuttle flights for NASA. It's a day of mixed emotions for workers at the Kennedy Space Center. An employee appreciation event is underway right now, actually. Uh, take a look at this live picture. NASA's administrator says the shuttle landing turns the page on a remarkable era and begins the next chapter of space exploration. And CNN's John Zarella joins me live from the Kennedy Space Center uh, with more on the shuttle Atlantis and its sentimental journey into history. So, John, uh, what was it like when Atlantis touched down for the last time? Yeah, you know, uh, up until now, Frederica, you always sit there and you say, well, there's always going to be another launch to come to, always another landing to come to. And, uh, you know, that's certainly not the case anymore. Uh, that was, This was it. And, uh, you know, you, you just mentioned those live pictures. Uh, the shuttle Atlantis being towed over to what's known as the orbiter processing facility. Uh, and it's going to be left outside that, that building for a while to allow the NASA employees to all come up to it uh, and see the vehicle outside. It'll be brought inside uh, and uh, we'll spend a, a couple of years pretty much in there until the new building where it's going to be housed, the museum building, uh, is ready. And that's just a couple miles away. Uh, Atlantis is going to be right here at the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex and they're getting that building ready. They're going to groundbreak that uh, probably in the uh, the late fall. Uh, so, uh, but, but yeah, you know, tomorrow, some 2,300 workers are, are going to be laid off uh, as well. So that's a real, real tough thing here. Uh, so very bittersweet. And, uh, you know, the crew, the four-member crew got off the orbiter about an hour and a half after it, uh, after it touched down. They walked around the vehicle. There were hugs. Uh, people were shaking their hands. Uh, and uh, then uh, Commander Ferguson came out and, and spoke a few words. And we were actually taken out to the landing site. And and I spoke with Lori Garver, who is the deputy administrator, because Congress is already talking about cutting NASA's budget next year. And Garver had some very, very stark words about what the future would be like if Congress goes through with more budget cuts for NASA. Additional hard choices are not going to come without a cost. We will either be counting on the Russians for a decade or we will be not allowing uh, the future generations to see that blue ocean on a distant planet. <laughs> Uh, so, John, yeah. you know, I know it is it is bittersweet, uh, and and we see when they're having that appreciation day celebration. We've been looking at the live pictures just as you were talking uh, about how sentimental this journey really has been. You can hear in yeah. the in the distance there the singing. What else will take place uh, there during uh, this appreciation day event? Well, we're waiting for an, uh, the astronauts themselves uh, are going to come out and hold a news conference. There was already a news conference by the mission management team talking about what a great flight this was, how perfectly clean the vehicle was, uh, and uh, then that's going to wrap it up. And as I mentioned, you know, tomorrow, 2,300 mm -hmm. people, many of them who are at that event right now, oh boy. Uh, are going to be saying goodbye because their jobs are over. Yeah, I'm sure there are a lot of tears there. The singing of the national anthem as yeah. well. All right, thanks so much. John Zarella, appreciate that from the Kennedy Space Center.